Hi Ace, are you guys ready to learn a new course study? This is Hassett et al. done in 2008. And if you love primates, you're gonna love these little monkeys. You know, toy preferencing and sex differences, it goes right back to the nature-nurture debate, doesn't it? Do we like, as girls, feminine toys because we were nurtured to play with feminine toys, like in our environment, our upbringing, or are we born this way? Are we wired, like neurologically, biologically, to preference these kinds of toys? That's the big question. So research has found that among boys and girls, um, boys tend to interact with masculine type toys like trucks, while girls tend to favor feminine type toys like stuffed animals, like plushies, baby dolls, that kind of stuff, Barbies. Boys tend to stick with stereotypical masculine toys as opposed to girls. They're going to play with a more wider variety of uh, both feminine and masculine toys. And studies looking at biological differences among boys and girls point to the notion that girls with CAH, which is congenital adrenal hyperplasia, and they're, in a sense, producing more androgen, which fills them with more testosterone, that they will prefer masculine toys when that occurs. Isn't that interesting? I thought it was interesting. So before the Hassett et al. study, there was another study with vervet monkeys in 2002 conducted by Alexander and Hines, and they looked into sex differences in non-human primates with human toys available. And the study used a single masculine or feminine toy and recorded the monkey, the vervet monkey, and how long the monkey would play with each toy. And this is contradicting human boy girl play trends. The male monkey spent similar time with both masculine and feminine toys, whereas the feminine monkey spent more time with the feminine toys. Now, Hassett et al., they argue that this did not display toy preferencing. It just displayed how long they were playing with the toy. Does it really mean that they're preferencing them? And this is the basis for the current study in Hassett et al. using rhesus monkeys, uh, different than the vervet, vervet monkeys, it's a methodological weakness, weakness, they suppose, that it's not really valid because it wasn't testing what it was intended to test. Preferencing is different than the time playing with the toy. Do you see what I mean? So remember that the old Alexander Hines study in 2002 differs in this way from the Hassett et al. So the purpose of the study overall is to investigate the potential sex differences among rhesus monkeys for toy preferencing. Um, to investigate if a toy preference is related to biological factors rather than socialization, and also to compare the toy preferences of male and female rhesus monkeys to previous research findings for human children. Now the hypothesis is very generalized here. Toy preference among sexes is due to biological causes that influence behavior and cognitive biases rather than learn differences. So these are some typical questions that the ACE will ask you. What type of study is this? And this is considered a natural field experiment. The different variables of the study, let's talk about the IVs and the DVs. The IV is the sex of the monkey, right? And it's, it's considered a natural IV because you're not really manipulating or changing anything. They're naturally born female or naturally born male. And then B is the category of toy. Is it a wheeled toy, which is considered the masculine toys, or or is it a plush toy, which is considered the feminine toy? And also the rank and age of the monkey. And this is also another natural IV. When they say rank of the monkey, it's like their social status with, which, within their clan. So that's the rank of the monkey. And then the age of the monkey also plays a role in toy preferencing. Now, what are they trying to find out? What are they trying to measure? That's the DV. The DV, there's three. The first one is the frequency of playing with a toy. The second one is a is their duration, like how long they actually play with a toy. And then the last one is the magnitude of preference score. So the magnitude of preference score is going to be like an overall score of which toy they gravitated to the most, which is going to be their preference, quote unquote. The design of 
the study. Another ACE question is this is an independent group study um, and they're looking at the gender of the monkey and they're going to get one exposure to each available toy, whether it be a truck, masculine toy, or a plushy feminine toy. All right, the ACE always asks ask us questions about the sample. So you're supposed to know that this is an opportunity sample because these monkeys were taken from the Yerkes National Primate Research Center. And they used a total of 82 monkeys, 61 females and 21 males. They met the criteria for this study. Now, the sample was chosen from a large social group of 135 monkeys that have lived there for over 25 years. 14 monkeys were excluded because they were participating in other prenatal hormone studies and 39 babies were excluded as it was too difficult to tell them apart. Now monkeys were pre-coded for social rank and age and that was used later for data and analysis. Um, the social rank was previously determined by behavioral observations of grooming, dominance, and submissive behavior. So if you're not sure what that's about, remember that in the monkey world, right? The one who grooms, the groomer, is usually subservient, right? Lower status than the one that's being groomed will have higher rank or higher status. It's all about achieving dominance. So the apparatus used here in the study are toys and the color and the shapes of the items all varied, but the plush toys or the feminine toys were Pooh Bear, Raggedy Ann, Scooby-Doo, Koala Hand Puppet, Armadillo, a teddy bear, and a turtle. Whereas the masculine toys were the wheel toys. They had a wagon, a truck, a car, construction vehicles, shopping cart, a dump truck, and one truck that was repeated. Because you know what, a truck is a truck and they all have wheels. So the subjects were housed in their natal group, which is their birth group, in a 25 by 25 outdoor compound that had temperature controlled interior also. Nice. Subjects were kept in an enclosed area while researchers placed one wheeled and one plush toy in the outside area, about 10 meters apart. For each trial, there were seven trials total. The placement of the wheeled and plush toy was counterbalanced, which means they're going to put them in different sides each time to make sure that the monkeys don't just prefer the right side of the compound and that's why they're playing with that toy. They wanted to make sure the monkey preferred the toy and not the side of the compound, right? So they had to, you know, counterbalance that. Each trial was to last about 25 minutes. One was only 18 minutes because a plush toy was ripped apart and that's what monkeys do. For each trial, a video camera was focused on each toy for review by two observers. Each observer noted the identity of the animal and the age and sex as well as the behavior being displayed before their eyes on camera. The time of the interacting with each toy was calculated giving the duration score. You know in order to operationalize your study you got to have a checklist and the checklist here is to make sure that the monkeys are displaying certain behaviors. So did they do extended touch? Uh, did they hold the toy? Did they sit on the toy? Did they carry the toy in their hand? Did they carry it in their arms? Did they carry it in their mouth? Did they drag the toy around? Did they manipulate parts of the toy? Um, did they touch the toy a lot? Did they sniff it? Um, did they destroy it? Did they jump away from it? Did they throw it? Um, they want to look at the behaviors and mark and document the behaviors for each monkey. So let's check out the results right here. The frequency of the data basically said that each monkey received their own data set for frequency and duration of the behavior with the toys. And so in sum, the males showed a statistical preference for wheel toys over the plushies. And the females did not really show a statistical preference between the two categories of toys. So when you're comparing the two sexes, females interacted with the plush toys more, but there was no 
statistical difference in the preference for the wheel toys. So if you look at the data right next to my head there, that little chart, if you look at the wheel toys, look at the male statistic and frequency a little over nine, the female was a little over six, and this is the masculine toy. But look at the plushy toy, the male a little over two, and the female just a little above seven. So there's not a huge jump statistically with the females. So the duration data is how long they played with the toys. Male showed a statistical time spent playing with wheeled toys over plush toys in general, about five minutes and 30 seconds. Females did not show a statistical difference among the toys, each about a minute and a half on average. Comparing the sexes, there was no overall statistical difference was found between the two sexes for the time spent playing with the wheeled and the plush toys. So the magnitude of preference score was calculated for all the participants. For males, it was total frequency and duration of the wheel toys minus the total frequency and duration of the plush toys. For females, it was the opposite. It was the plush toys minus the wheel toys as above. So the results, the males had a significantly higher preference for wheel toys, whereas the females showed no strong preference. Interesting, right? As far as the rank data, the males did not show a correlation with rank, neither frequency or duration. Females, however, did show a positive correlation with rank for frequency of play for wheeled and plush toys. Also a positive correlation with duration for plush toys. And there was no real differences found with the age data. Interesting, right? So the general results of the study, they talk about a summary comparison of rhesus monkeys to human children in a study from Berenbaum and Hines back in 1992. Human study looked at three to eight year old girls with CAH. Remember, they produce more androgen in utero, so you're gonna assume they're gonna have more testosterone overall. And do you know that they found that girls exposed to higher levels of that prenatal androgen preferred boy toys over girl toys? So they're correlating it to a hormonal cause. Isn't that interesting? Both rhesus monkeys and human children showed gender differences. Males strongly preferred masculine toys, such as the wheel toys, the trucks, whereas females slightly preferred the feminine toys like the plushies. This preference was greater among males in both studies, both humans and monkeys. Interesting, right? So in conclusion, the Hazard et al. notes that their findings support a biological basis for differences in toy preferencing. And these hormones, they influence behavior and cognitive biases, which in turn are influenced by learning, experiences, and social pressures. This may explain why boys are much more likely to choose masculine toys, whereas girls are more likely to have a variation in toy choices. Like the picture right above my head, two thumbs up for ethics. This study did meet most ethical guidelines, if not all. Uh, the study was conducted in accordance with the guidelines for the care and use of lab animals. It took place at the Yerkes National Primate Research Center, and it was approved also by the Emory University Ethical Committee on Animal Care and Use. They had proper housing. They lived in a social family group. Um, they were fed monkey child two times a day. They were given fresh fruits and vegetables one time a day and water was always available. And you have to also think, these monkeys were not very distressed. Think about it. They were playing with toys. They were, the study was monkeys playing with toys. This is not a bad thing. Um, they were bred and raised in captivity, so they were not captured from the wild and put in this weird environment with stranger monkeys. They were all raised together in their family environment. The toy choices did not pose potential harm on these monkeys, not even a little. And they used video cameras to record the behavior so a human wasn't interjecting themselves into the monkey world. So think about it. These monkeys were not touched. They were not very much manipulated. They were watched by cameras and they were just given toys to play with. So this was a highly ethical study. No harm here and no distress. Thumbs up. 
Okay, so we know what ACE is going to ask of you. What is the strength and what is the weakness of the study? So know it. What is the strength of this study? Remember in your mind when you think strength of a study and you know this is a lab study, think of controls, all the standardizations, right, that were used. That's always going to be a strength. Remember they did the counterbalancing, so they would rotate. They would sometimes put the toy on the right side of the compound, sometimes the left. So we know the monkey was using the preferencing of the toy to guide where it went, not the preferencing of the compound. That's very important. The use of video cameras is fantastic because we could play it and we could rewind it and see it again and you're not distressing the monkey at all. The use of inter-rater reliability is really important. They had a behavior checklist. That's really great. That way, each observer, right, they're on the same page. They're agreeing to the same thing they're using the same checklist this is a strength also the consideration and data analysis of potential confounding variables of social rank and age was also integrated in the data so all of these things are strengths now let's talk about the weaknesses only selected data was used because remember certain monkeys that meet the criteria so only select data was used and that's going to give a little bit of a weakness to the experiment as far as comparing the monkeys to human child data, they're not identical as monkey toys were based on categories like wheeled or plush and the human data was on gender stereotypical toys. Um, remember this is quantitative data only, there's no descriptive qualitative data here included, which that could be seen as a weakness. And remember lower generalizability. Ask yourself why there's lower generalizability. This is only one type of monkey, it's a recess monkey and it was only in one place and they're all related so lower generalizability just for that alone okay some other typical ace questions that they ask are integrating the nature nurture debate and how does this Hassett et al. study support nature. The findings provide evidence that biological differences like hormones can play a role in the toy preferencing of these monkeys. Now, how does it support nurture social rank, right? Social rank among the female monkeys positively correlated with the time spent interacting with both the wheeled and the plush toys. But then again, female dominance can be affected by testosterone levels, so that could be also the argument for the nature side. Um, as far as application to everyday life, the usefulness for the Hassett et al. study, it might be helpful in choosing a toy to give as a gift, like if you have to figure out, okay, what toy do I buy this kid for their birthday? It's a female child, nine years of age, what's appropriate? Um, that could be one application. Um, could it be helpful maybe for toy makers and advertisers and uh, marketing for toys? Maybe so. At the end of each study, what do we do? We fill in the grave. So what is G in grave? It's generalizability. And remember, we already talked about this. Generalizability is going to be lower because they only use certain data. Uh, the study can't say this is true for all monkeys or true for all humans, right? So the toy category thing, it might not be applicable to all, so it's going to have lower generalizability. Now, replicability, pretty high because remember that this is a lab study and it can be replicated pretty easily they had strict controls and standardization so we're gonna give that one a thumbs up applicability pretty high again perhaps this can help with the understanding of male and female differences and the kind of toys that they like and then V validity they tested what was intended to test toy preferencing so we're gonna give that a thumbs up and then ethics you know it was good it was very very positive they stuck you know everything was positive ethical guidelines everything was followed to the letter um, and and really those animals were treated amazingly well and they were under no distress. So we're gonna say thumbs up for ethics as well. All right, you guys, so we're finished with the Hassett et al. study. It's your job to know those details, study, study, study. And remember, when you're doing the ACE exam, you're gonna write your heart out. You're gonna write till that hand feels like it's gonna fall off. You're gonna have a claw that looks like this and that's normal. You're gonna write, you're gonna shower them with information. All that data you have in your head, you're gonna put it on that paper something's got to stick all right you guys try your best